G'day guys, Joseph here again from Professional CAD Systems. So the next series we're going to look at is just scanning various objects, different mechanical shapes, um, textures, colors, shininess. So we're just going to look at how we can scan these objects and um, help you guys get better scans from your 3D scanner. So we've already looked at how to install the Peel software licensing, peel, how we, how to get started essentially. So look out for that video on our YouTube channel. Um, so let's get ahead, go ahead and just scan this part here. It's just a, a mechanical part, a demo part that we can just show you how to redesign re this part or re reverse engineer it um, and recreate it because it has a bit of corrosion on it. It's hard to see and a few mechanical dents and we just need to replace it. So we're going to go ahead and click on new scan. Uh, for this instance, it is a, a somewhat small part. Um, I'm just going to use fine detail. And I go over um, the parameters in more detail for, in the getting started section. Um, I'm going to use a balanced output. I don't need color. Um, and let's just get started. So I can hit start scan and it automatically just takes me straight into getting started with a scanner. On the back of the PL3, there's a little play button. You just need to hit that. And it just straight away just starts to scan. And you can move in all orientations around the part. And just grab it from all directions. Since it's on a turntable, I can just move the turntable around. But in real life, you just need to go around the part in different orientations. And you can see the distance meter is just showing on as the line, sorry, are showing as a distance meter. So as I get too close, it will go red, too far, it's green, sorry, blue. Um, green is actually the optimized distance. And I've I've pretty much got everything I need. Um, just so you know, the, the PL3 is so flexible, I can actually pick up the part and I can scan it while holding it. It thinks that it you know, knows where it is because it's using targets. So that is definitely a possibility to scan while you're holding an object. I'm not suggesting it's the best possibility, but it can be done. So we can now go ahead and go to the next um, screen. And it's automatically found the table, which is great. If it didn't, you could use um, draw a line or you could select uh, the background or select targets, for example. So I could use three targets and just generate a plane. And I can then just pull that plane up a little bit if I wanted to and continue. If you don't want a plane or a cutting plane, you could have hit cancel and just gone ahead and manually edited out any floating data. So next, um, I typically use the connect select tool to select whatever is a connected mesh. So holding control and clicking what I, on what I want to keep, I can then select that. And then I can select the tool which is called keep only and it's only going to keep whatever's selected and delete everything else. So it's a really fast and intuitive way of just selecting and keeping only what you want and need. So looking at the holes, you know, I'm interested, have I got enough information in those holes to generate some uh, bosses? And I do, I'm happy with that. I've got a little bit of internal information. Um, so I could use that, but I could, if I really wanted to in this instance, I could turn it over um, and capture the other half. So why not? Let's hit the plus button to add a new scan. Turn it over, and I'm only going to rest it there. I'm not going to spin the manual turntable because it's just it's only resting there. So let's just go ahead and capture it just like it is. So we're just going to aim and shoot, and just grab the part from the other side.
So hopefully that's enough common geometry to capture both sides. So we can pause that. We can go next on our interface. We can pull up the clipping plane until it gets rid of the table and go a little bit higher if you wanted to. And then continue and just delete that clipping plane away. Holding control, click on what you want to keep and then select the keep only selection tool. As soon as I go next, it should use the common targets that are found on the path to align the two together, which it has. So the alignment process is just so simple. It just automatically aligns. And now we can go next or add a new scan if we wanted to add another scan. Maybe you might need, may have needed to add another scan if you didn't have enough information or data. If there were some holes, for example. Okay, so it's automatically gone ahead, aligned the two scans, it's merged the two scans, and I, and I have a very clean finished mesh, which is so useful. So next I could say, well, actually now I want to lock my um, axis, so I could go and click on the Y axis and hold control and click, and it just goes ahead and finds that cylinder. If I need to reduce the triangle selection, I could just do that. And I can actually change the tolerance here as well so that it ignores, ignores the defects when it's doing the alignment. If I need to manually deselect an area because I don't actually want it to calculate this dent or this dent over here, I can hold control and shift on my keyboard and then just zoom around what I don't want it to use and then right click and then still holding control and shift take out these dents and then i'm only using the good part of the cylinder for my um, axis if i need to flip the axis um, i can click on the flip button here and just flip the orientation of that and then you need to lock it as soon as you're finished with the cylinder next i'm going to use uh, one of the end planes as my uh, xy so I'm going to use this end plane here. And then I can lock that. And then the last entity I want to use um, could be this flat surface at the bottom, but it could have also been one of these uh, bosses. So if I, for example, want to use the blue axis, I could then hold control and just click on that. And it just locks the Z in the upward position. Okay, lock that. And then there's only one last axis to lock. So I could use uh, the green plane. And I thought I had done that, but maybe I forgot to press lock before continuing on. And so now all my axes are locked. All the degrees of freedom are locked. And I'm happy with the result. Click on the next button and it launches you into the improved section. So I can go ahead and just tidy up any potential holes that there may be. So if I click on the hole filling tool, here's a little hole that's arose. I'll grab that. And pretty much I've, there's virtually no holes, you know, there's maybe a couple here and there. Um, and I've just got some where the bosses are, but since we're going to be reverse engineering this with the peel.cad software, there's not much point doing any more mesh modification. Um, I might just show you how to do one hole just so that you know how to do it in the peel.os software, um, just in case you're using just peel.os with Fusion or Inventor SolarWorks, for example, um, and you don't have the peel.cad. So I'm going to click on um, the bridge selection tool and I'm going to turn on flat fill. So here's my hole here. And if I need to try and complete this hole, I could then say, um, bridge across flat. So you pick two points and then choose the middle. Pick another two points. One, two, and then pick the middle and it will bridge across. So typically I do this in about four to five sections on a cylinder. And you're assisting it, you know, you're giving it 
some more information to help with the actual hole filling. So that should be enough. Then I can turn off flat fill, go to the hole, hole filling, and then I can click on the other holes. And you can see it's assisted having a bridge to bridge across, and I'm getting much better results. Press OK. If I had any spikes on my drawing, so on my scan, if I had any spikes on my scan, I could click on Remove Spikes, increase the level, and it will go ahead and just find anywhere that may have a spike. Hit Apply or Preview, and it just tidies that up. Another really great tool is the Mesh Cleanup tool. And it's actually called Clean Mesh. You click on that, it will just go ahead and just do a nice clean on your mesh. So I'm really happy with my results now. I can go Next. And then if I want to go straight to Fusion, I could go Export Mesh or to your CAD software, Export Mesh. Or if I want to go to Peel.CAD, click on Peel.CAD and it will launch you into the Peel.CAD software.